Hey, what's up, everybody? So my uh, LiftMaster garage door opener has stopped working, and uh, I thought I'd uh, make a teardown video and repair uh, video. So we're going to try to figure out what's wrong with it, and uh, we're going to open it up, and I'm going to try to find a schematic online, too. I think I, think I saw one somewhere. So let, let me show you what it's doing first, okay? So... If I push a button here, it should light up the keyboard, right? Okay, you see how that lit up right there? Okay, it's not very bright. We'll see if we can fix that also to make it brighter. Now I'll push uh, a different key here. See that works, it lit up, okay? Now all these keys are working, okay? Uh, if I push the enter key, most of the time it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. You can see it light up for a little bit, but most of the times it does nothing, okay? So I think the, the contact on that enter key is worn out. So the other thing I wanted to point out is when you push a button, notice how it stays lit for a few seconds, okay? It's, uh, it's about five seconds. It stays lit for about five seconds, okay? Keep that in mind. We're, we're going to go over that in a minute. But uh, so the enter key is definitely not working and uh, the lights aren't bright enough. So let's take it apart and see if we could fix it. All right. Now, I have already uh, taken this apart, but let me show you what I did, because uh, if you try to force it, you'll break it because it's welded together. OK. All right. So <clears throat> first we remove the battery. OK. Uh, let's get that battery out of there. Okay, now this uh, cover here, <clears throat> you see how it is here? Okay, you have to snap those out. So let me uh, get a screwdriver. I'll use this little screwdriver here. Okay, now you see these things in the hole right there? Those, that's what has to come out. So uh, we'll do it from the front. Okay, we'll just jam that in there like that. There you go. Pops right out, okay? Just be careful not to break them. All right, now, in order to take this apart, this is the, the hard part. So you see right here, okay, this gap right here all the way around, Okay, you have to stick a knife in there, okay? And uh, what I did is I took this razor blade, okay? And I went in there all the way around, okay? Around the whole thing, just like that. Okay, then you have to go on the long side right in the middle, okay? And open it up, pry it open, and then go on this side, start from the middle, and pry it open okay then do these small sides okay uh i don't know if you could see here i cracked it because I, I tried using a screwdriver you, you can't do it with a flathead screwdriver okay you have to use something that's sharp and angled like a chisel okay and uh what i did is i stuck it in there okay i started right here like that down and up okay basically go down and lift up down lift up go down and lift up and then do the same thing here and the same thing here and you'll get it out eventually okay and then it comes apart okay and there we go and here is uh the touchpad now these this is the enter key okay this black stuff is conductive it's supposed to be conductive and uh the way it works is uh when you push it down it makes contact here and shorts it out okay and that's the how it works like a switch okay now the, these are these were not dirty i thought they might be dirty but they weren't i cleaned them with rubbing alcohol but they were clean okay and uh so were these okay so it's not dirt that's causing this it's the the actual uh th th this actual uh thing is not conductive anymore okay so what I'm going to do right now is uh, measure the resistance 
on these to see how bad they are. All right, let's see what the resistance is on these, okay? And I'm just going to go across it. Well, let's start with this one. 100K, okay? This is no good. 60K. 64K. 40, 42K. 48K. These are all no good. 130K. Let's see what this one here is. Over a meg, okay? 120K. Well, this one's the lowest, 15K. This is another one, 17K. Okay, but these are all too high. These should be a couple hundred ohms. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have to fix all these, okay? All right, so how are we going to fix these? Well, I have some aluminum tape here, okay? And let's see how this is here. Okay, if I go on this, not even an ohm, okay? That's perfect. I also have some copper tape, okay? We can use that. Let's see how that is. Let's see if it has any resistance. Same thing, okay? Actually, I like the aluminum because it, it sticks better for some reason. Uh, so I think I'm going to use some aluminum tape. Now, you don't have to use aluminum tape if you don't have it. You can you can use foil, okay? Just get some Reynolds wrap or some uh, tin foil and uh, put a little super glue on there and just glue it on, okay? Uh, in fact, maybe I'll do it that way. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to use this, uh, put some super glue on there and glue some tin foil on there. Uh, let me get some foil. I'll be right back. All right, so <clears throat> I got some uh, tin foil here, dollar store tin foil. Okay, and I'm going to cut out a little piece. And uh, okay, let's uh, let's measure it. Let's measure it and see what the resistance is on this tin foil. Should be zero also. Close to it. 0.6. Okay. Let's see the other side. 0.4. Yep, that'll work. Alright, so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is uh put some super glue on there. Okay. On all of them. And cut a piece of foil. Stick it on all of them. And uh, we should be good to go. Alright, so let me do that now. All right, I got this uh, super glue here, and I'm going to put a little bit on here like that. <clears throat> okay, I have to use this piece of wood because the glue is kind of messed up, the glue bottle. Let me put that on there like that. Okay. And that's it. Now we just push it down a little and let it dry. And let's do the other buttons. Got a little foil. All right, now, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to do it, do it off camera, and I'll come back when I'm done. All right, so uh, this is done. As you can see here, when I was uh, cutting the foil here and a couple other places like here, I cut a little too much, and uh, but, I mean, it's going to work. It should be fine. It's enough to make contact. Now... I don't know how uh, permanent this is going to be because the foil is very thin. So next time I would probably use uh, the aluminum tape right here. Uh, it's a little thicker. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm, I'm going to just put this on top, plug in the battery and see if it works. So let's do that. All right. So I plugged in the battery and uh, this should just go right on top and 
Now, as soon as I make contact, as soon as I push a button, you should see the LEDs light up. So let me turn some lights off. Okay, so let's try this enter button. There we go. Works. Stays on for five seconds like the rest of them. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. It's working. All right, so <clears throat> let me take this off. Okay, now these LEDs are uh, not not bright enough. Uh, let me short this so we can see. Okay, see they're not that bright. So I'm gonna put some brighter ones on there. Uh, I'm gonna take these off and put some bright white LEDs on there because uh, I like it brighter. And uh, it's not like it's gonna kill a battery because they're not always on. They're only on when you push the button you know for five seconds so I'm gonna put some brighter ones on there All right, let's try the new lights and see how they are. <clears throat> Hopefully they'll be brighter. Okay, let's get the battery. Plug it in. Okay. And uh, where's the keypad? Let's get the keypad. Let's shut the lights. Make it dark in here. And let's see what we got. Whoa, look at that. Nice. Nice and bright. Wow. That looks good. Okay. All right, guys, I found this uh, schematic online. Uh, now, if you do a search for uh, LiftMaster rolling code keyless entry, uh, you'll find it. Just do a Google search for it. Uh, so basically, uh, they have this uh, microcontroller here. Uh, and the L0 through L7 uh, pins is what detects what key has been pressed. So uh, 7, 8, and or uh, 7, 6, and 5 pins, that's these right here. Uh, they detect the actual row that was pressed because there's only three rows one, two, and three. Okay, now the four, three, two, one, and zero detects the column because there's a one, two, three, four, five columns. Okay, so that's how it knows what uh button you pressed. Okay, 
Uh, if you're familiar with, uh, if, if you've ever worked with uh, Adrenos and uh, you've worked with keypads, you interfaced with them, it's basically the same same way. All right. Uh, so here is the battery right here, okay? And if you notice, uh, everything here, every, every other voltage here is, uh, except for the battery, every other voltage is 4.8, okay? Like right here, uh, going to the microcontroller, uh, right here and uh, this is uh, EEPROM uh, it looks like okay that's 4.8 uh, you have uh, 4.8 volts uh, on the uh, transmitter section where the antenna is uh, then you have a 4.8 volt source it says here okay so let's see how this works uh, so basically what's happening is uh, you have your 9 volt battery and the only thing that works off of 9 volts is the LEDs right here, okay, because the 9 volts goes uh, directly into these LEDs, okay. Everything else works on 4.8 volts. So what's happening is you got your 9 volts going here, okay, and it's going through this series pass transistor, okay. Uh, you have this uh, 5.6 volt zener, okay, so you got 9 volts minus 5.6 minus the base emitter drop, which leaves you with uh, 4.8 volts. So what's happening is they're using this uh, this section right here as a uh, voltage regulator to drop the voltage to uh, 4.8 volts. Uh, now the the thing is is this is not on because you have this PNP transistor here, okay? And in order for this base to turn on so the voltage could be regulated, this this has to turn on and. This is not on. Uh, and how does this go on? Uh, basically, when you push a button, what's happening is you're pulling this base. Okay, let's say you push button number one. Okay, goes all the way here. And you're pulling the base to ground right there. Okay, so now by pushing a button, you turn on this transistor. And when you turn on this transistor, then current flows into this one here which turns this transistor on okay so now your regulator is producing 4.8 volts which is powering up this IC and the EEPROM and everything else that that needs to make this work okay uh, so what happens then is uh, once this thing gets powered up okay it knows you push the button because your button that you pushed is connected to these inputs here uh, so it sends a high on G2 right here, okay? And what that does is it turns on this transistor, okay? Once this transistor turns on, then the LEDs light up because there's a path to ground, okay, through this transistor. So basically you push the button, it turned on this regulator, it turned on the microprocessor, which sent a high on G2, and lit up the LEDs okay and we saw that these LEDs stay on for five seconds every time you push a button now the the question is you you have to push four buttons okay there's this is a four digit code so you have to push four buttons and then click enter so what happens when you release this button to push the next button when you release it this this is no longer connected to ground so this regulator turns off that means your LEDs should go off so how do they stay on for five seconds uh, you know because when once the power gets lost this thing turns off and this this is no longer high so these LEDs will will turn off right so that's what G1 is for so when G2 goes high when you first push the button and the LEDs go on G1 also goes high and what that does is that turns on this transistor and look at here this transistor also pulls this base to ground okay so now this will stay on so even if you push a button everything turns on you release that button it doesn't matter this will stay on because G2 and G1 will, will remain high for five seconds because this transistor has been turned on, which keeps this connected to ground for five seconds, okay? And that's how this works uh, to uh, turn this on and 
you know, or else if this was always on, the battery would die. So it just turns on when you first push a button, and then the microcontroller controls it uh, by turning this transistor on to, to keep it on for five seconds, okay? Uh, and then the other part is this part right here, okay? That's a common base configuration, it looks like, and uh, this is your antenna. L1 is your antenna, and basically this is the transmitter, so... Once you push your, once you enter your four buttons and you uh, press enter, uh, this interrupt sends out a, uh, a P, you know pulse width modulated uh, signal to the uh, the garage door to open the garage door through through this antenna right here. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty pretty neat design what they did with the the, the power regulating and how it turns on and off. Uh, but th that's how it works. Uh, so this this schematic is out there if you do a search for a rolling code keyless entry for uh, LiftMaster or Chamberlain or uh, Craftsman they're all the same. Uh, you'll get this uh, this schematic if you do a Google search. All right, let's uh, put it back together now, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna put this keypad on. Okay, uh, put that back in there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, now, you're going to have to glue it here uh, because we broke the bond. So I'm going to use this stuff here. Uh, I don't know where I got this or what kind of glue it is, but it says it's good for plastic. So I'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. Okay. Put a little bit around the edges. This edge here too. Okay, should be good. And yeah, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll use super glue. Okay. And we're gonna let that dry. Now it says it takes 24 hours to dry, so we'll just leave it for 24 hours. And I'm gonna put this battery in here. Let's put that down there. This is a lithium ion battery. It's rechargeable. Okay, put this on. And put this back on. Okay, that's good. Yeah, let's see. Beautiful. Let's turn off the lights. Wow, nice and bright. I like that. Okay. Let's go put it on my garage and try it out. All right, I've programmed code one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see if it works. There you go. Okay, there we have it. It's working.